Well, Demetrius, I mean, you've had a little time to adjust. What's it feel like? A new brand around you, a new home? What's what's the what's the feeling like for you right now? It feels good. It feels good. You know, I've, I've been doing one event out there in Singapore. I watched my buddy Bibiano uh, compete, um, and I, you know, I kind of been a, not a part of the event, but I know what's been going on over there. Obviously, you know, it's no secret. My coach Matt Hume, he's been a part of the one championship since the very beginning. Um, my teammate Bibiano Fernandez has been the champion over there. I think he has the most consecutive titles events for uh, no athletes. So um, I'm excited, man. I'm looking forward to the future. Yeah. We we do find it funny. I think I don't think you always enjoyed doing media so much, and now you're doing <laughs> you're doing more media than ever. They're running you around the globe, putting you everywhere. So what what does it feel? I mean, is it is it different now that you're with a, a new face? Or what is it? Yeah, it's 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 just different. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt in the past when I was doing the media for uh, a, a different uh, market. You know, I, I, you're trying to you're trying to sell something, you're trying to sell people to you, right? Uh, right now, you know, the biggest thing, you know, Charles Rui sells all his athletes is that, you know, just be authentic, right? And that's what I'm being. I'm always uh, happy. I love to compete. I love to go out there and give them my best and display my skills in mixed martial arts to the world. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that I'm able just to focus on that. You know what I mean? So, now I'm like talking to Mita. <laughs> Personally, you know, before your last fight, you said, you want to go around the world and collect belts. And I remember laughing and going, well, that'll never happen. And, yeah. and then here you go. How much at that time did you know this is what's going to happen. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, obviously, right? You know, I, I was going into that fight thinking I was going to win that fight. And obviously, I have a obligation as a champion to keep on defending the belt, which I've done for, you know, the, the past six years. So, obviously, things happen for a reason. Um, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy how things went the way it did. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just ecstatic. The last thing for me, I mean, we always guessed why your star wasn't as, you know, didn't live up to how great you were as a martial artist. And a lot of people say, that's his size, it's his size. I know it's still early, you haven't even fought yet, but now that you've been over in Asia and you've been, is it true? I mean, do you feel like you're you're getting more star power? You don't have to battle the fact that you're a, a smaller guy? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you look at uh, uh, the Japanese culture of mixed martial arts with Shuto Bushido. Um, a lot of the stars over there, like Kei Yamamoto, you know, R.A.P., uh, those guys were famous over in Japan. Um, and there were smaller guys, you know, you, you got, obviously you got the big guys who are superstars, like Bob Sapp, who's just a beast over there, and they just look at him like, oh my god, he's huge. But they had, um, they love the small weight class, and I, I, I can feel it. Even the last time I went over there, like, you know, they're like, oh, Demetri Johnson, and every, every single person has something. They call me the Speed Demon, they call me Mighty Mouse, they call me the Hero, so. Do you buy into that? Is it that simple? I mean, we always guess. Do, do you believe why you weren't a bigger star here is because of your size? Well, at the end of the day, you know, when you have, when you go to the gym and, you know, you got a guy who's about, you know, 215, he goes, oh yeah, you're no bigger than Dylan. He's 12 years old, he's about 145. <laughs> It, it, it can't play a factor, you know what I mean? But if you look at the true hardcore fans of mixed martial arts and sports itself, I mean, if I saw Dwight Howard, he was like, no, you're the truth, man. You, you, I know what's up. I ain't gonna mess with you, right? It's the ignorant people at home who sit down, sitting down, eating Cheetos, drinking a nice, not nice, disgusting Coca-Cola. Those are the guys who are like, this guy's got it. He's too small. So, there goes the Coke sponsorship. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I drink Zevia, zero calorie, it only has four ingredients. It's very healthy for you. You should try some. Uh, <laughs> if you had beaten Henry and then went on to continue defending a title in the UFC, would there ever reach a point where you thought, like, I'm dropping this title, I want to leave and go somewhere? Else? I, I would have, I, I had it in my mind if I would have won that fight, I would have finished out my four fights and then I would have gone to him. I would have came to one championship. So, sort of a silver lining that Henry got the win because he got a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think of the flyweight situation over there? I'm sure you've been asked about it. But you know, Sahido, you know, beat TJ, and now he's moving up to fight TJ one thirty five. What's your opinion on how it's gone since then? Uh, it's, I think it's gone the same way it was when I was still a champion. You know, I mean, there was already talks about the, them giving her the private division when I was the champion. So to me, did they ever say that to you? Yeah, uh, yeah. It just seems no, there's no story. So was that, gone. was that part of why you were thinking of leaving after? It, it, you know, it wasn't. I mean, I like I said, guys, um, it was more the lines that you know, I have five more years. So I give myself five more years, you know. <laughs> God bless me through bro 441 still <laughs> kicking butt, you know, I don't think I can do it. You know, my training's very intense. Um, but I give myself five more years, and you look at all the great athletes in mixed martial arts, Pro Cop, Benelay Silva, uh, you know, Vito Warper, I believe he's, he's fought in Japan before he even coming to North America, now he's going back to Japan, back to Asia. Uh, Gego Musashi, I mean, the list just goes on. Those guys, Competing over in the east, and they compete over the North America, uh, over in the West. And for me, I never got the opportunity. So this is a perfect opportunity for me for my last five years to go out and try to do something totally different, totally different weight class, just doing something totally that I didn't even see myself doing. 
So here we are. Do you see the flyweight division making an exodus over the? No, <laughs> I, I don't. I think one championship they're very particular, really like to pick, and they're not, they're not just gonna, you know, swallow this whole division. You know, that's not what they're looking to do. They're, obviously, you can see they're very cherry picking the, the athletes they want to have on their roster and what fits their brand the best. So, DJ, what can you tell us about the uh, plans for esports? So, what esports? They're having their very first uh, live event um, June. Uh, they already have the games picked out, but I can't tell you guys what those uh, uh, those games are. Um, I haven't really. I don't know what the spot is. Uh, excuse me, the location where we're having it. But last time I was on the call with those guys, they said it's going to look like June. They told me the games. I approved the games, and uh, I'm looking forward to see how it comes together. You know, that's one thing that's cool about one championship is that you know there's no off balance. Boundaries, right? They've already done a WBC boxing world title fight. They've already done, you know, they just had Stamp Fairtex. She just became a two weight, two divisional sport champion with uh, one Super Series and now Muay Thai. Um, <clears throat> so now they're doing the one esports. They got the games locked down. Now they're just trying to get the venue set up and all that stuff. So nothing's off of limits for these guys. What does it mean to be part of this organization when you have uh, Viviano Fernandez and uh, Gary Mangit, who just joined as well, who uh, I know you train with? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, uh, there hasn't been a time in my my career where I've actually been in the same organization as a teammate. Yeah. There is one, it was Karis Fedor when he first got into the UFC. We were both kind of together, so it was almost kind of like I can go root for him, kind of like you know, like a little wolf pack from you know Seattle, Washington. You see guys like Team Alpha Male, you see guys like Zillions, I don't know if that teams are on anymore, but American top team, you know, those guys have a code, they're always rooting for each other. So now I've always rooted for Bibiano Fernandez and Gary, but now that they're actually we're part of the same organization, it's it's a little more it's cool. Okay, but you you never fight them, obviously, right? No, no, I yeah. never fight them. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I mean, I'll tell Chacha like Bibiano is like a mentor to me. You know, he's my jujitsu has gone leaps and bounds since he's. I mean, me him training here since 2011, 2012. I mean, obviously, if like me, if they came to to the table with a ridiculous offer, I see Bibiano like it's okay, buddy. We're gonna we're, 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 think about our family. We'll be good. We'll be good, my friend. And no hard feelings, you know. Um, but I, I don't see our past ever crossing. Do you want to see any more of the UFC flyweights come over to one, or are you just happy with who's, who's there? I, I'm I'm just happy with wherever Chachri and, and you know. The matchmakers or the whoever scouts the talent, because it's not it's that's a problem, right? Everybody's trying to think that you know North America. There's there's so many different uh, organizations out there. And Rich Franklin's doing an amazing job with the One Warrior Series, going out there finding talent. So it, it, this isn't all the best you know fighters in the world. You know you got Yuya Wakamatsu, you got Karat uh, Akhmatov, you got uh, Danny King, Dad. Those guys have never stepped foot on North American soil and competed. So I think us hoping or you guys. Oh yeah, trying to shove that down my throat like we need to grab all of them. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> right.